Hello and welcome to Shaman Sister Sessions, episode 72. I am Michelle Hawk and I'm here with my Shaman Sister, Catherine Bird. It is our great joy, excitement, and inspiration to continue to offer you this podcast about what it means to do this work in the world and who we have to be in order to show up as the fullest version of ourselves as practitioners, as healers, as seekers, as coaches, as those on the path to bring more light and love and ground it in the physical plane. Today, we are speaking about soul retrieval, which is, as anyone on the path knows, hopefully, an essential and vitally important part of what it means to do this work and what it means to show up as our fully expressed selves. This is part of our July theme month. We do, just to put on your radar, we do have a special guest coming on our show July 24th, so in three weeks, to discuss the lunar consciousness of grief. So this month, we're using the rest of July to give you more context, give you more background, and provide some more insight as to what we'll be talking about with this special guest in July. So today, that's soul retrieval. Woo! Super fun. It's, it's a little bit of a juxtaposition, right, Kat, where it's like so sunny outside and we're talking about like crunchy things. And <sighs> right. I guess. I don't know. I mean, um, you know, it we could also say that we just went through the here in this hemisphere, the summer solstice, which now we are traveling back towards the darkness. So this is a perfect time to mm -hmm. be discussing going into the dark places. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about all the light stuff in December. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, and, and also there is that, um, that aspect of, the darkness has a place in even the brightest, most expansive container of the summer solstice, because again, they, they don't exist without each other. And, and, you know, personal philosophy wise, like, yeah, soul retrieval is, is a, is the result of soul loss. And how can we understand and appreciate the context of what it means to go into the darkness, not out of a goal of going for the light or going for the healing, but just for its own sake as a healing opportunity. So I think that's um, going to be one of our running themes this month as well as we go through July. Very beautiful. Um, and you know, I, I find that, that often, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, it's not like there's a perfect time of year to be <laughs> doing the work. It just shows up when it's supposed to show up. And, um, and this is such an important and vital topic to healing, to what it is that we are looking at when we're considering what it means to be whole what it means to be complete within ourselves, to have access to all aspects of ourselves and to be living in full, authentic expression and truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think it's easy when we're talking about soul retrieval to, to skip the part of, well, why do we need soul retrieval? But I, I want to start there. And to, in order to talk about soul retrieval, we need to talk about soul loss mm -hmm. and soul fragmentation, which inherently, Kat, like you were mentioning that piece about wholeness, that is, you know, we, we are whole, we are perfect as we are. And yet there is this, uh, you know, this phenomenon that we as healers witness that we as healers have seen not only in this lifetime but in past lives and in um and in these different contact uh, contexts in soul contracts around soul fragmentation and soul loss so let's start there and then we can go yeah. into the, the aspect of retrieval right uh so you know this has been a concept that has spanned you know, space and time all over the world, uh, shamans and healers were aware that this was something that happened to humans when there was a trauma, an illness, something significant that went on in a person's life. They would know, oh, we need, okay, they've just almost died from this experience or there was something significant that happened we need to go and make sure that there's not any parts that have have left. So this is not a 
this is not a new thing, uh, but it is also, I think, worth mentioning that this is, is something that has been tracked all over the place in lots of different ways. And so you can also see it in modern uh, psychology and in ways of going through therapeutic processes where there's also this aspect of an awareness of a fragmentation or a, a loss of some aspect of self which leads to these certain uh, sort of, you know, experiences and symptoms of having a soul loss or soul fragmentation. So I think let's, let's start there as we're going through this like soul loss and soul fragmentation of where do we want to start? Do we want to start with the symptoms or how does it happen? Where, let's, where does it come from? Walk, yeah, let's walk through the process of how would this happen? So we've, we've listed, you know, kind of traumas and, and sort of these severe shocks and, and again, this can take place not only in our current lifetime, but we can still be feeling the effects of soul loss and soul fragmentation that occurred in other timelines or other past lives. So please keep that in mind. So let's imagine for a moment that we are in the context of a society uh, in a, a community who understands and has a concept for soul loss and soul fragmentation, because I think that's, you know, this is where we get into trouble is the fact that our society doesn't. So let's start imagining, okay, we're part of a, a community that has a concept for this. And I say, for example, I experience a severe trauma. I, um, either a physical trauma of, you know, there's an accident and, um, and I almost die or maybe I do die and then I come back to life or, or, you know, have a severe injury to my body. Um, you know, there's that form of trauma or I, um, lose a child or lose a partner or there is some severe shock that happens. The work in in knowing that, okay, it's not just the, the physical existence that receives a shock and, and the heart that receives the shock. It is the actual energy body itself and the higher self, the soul itself. If we can imagine the soul as an entity receives that same shock that the physical body, the emotional body, the energetic body does. And since it's in the etheric realm, since this is a very intangible concept, this is, you know, the thing that you have to know that that happens. Otherwise, you're not going to have any concept for it. And so, but in, in this case of our imaginary scenario, I go through this extreme trauma. Say, for example, I, um, you know, lose a, a child. And there is, you know, the grief work, not only of going through the physical loss of that, but understanding that there is a part of my soul that has been shocked and potentially broken, potentially fragmented and potentially lost. And so in the context of this society that has, has the knowledge of that, there would be as part of the healing and the, and the grieving practice, not only the healing and the grieving and, and whatever other practices and, and honoring the this, this physical loss, but as part of this process, calling that piece of my soul back to me, healing it and reintegrating it to come back to soul wholeness. So that would be in the ideal scenario where some traumatic event occurs, there is the knowledge, the context and the tools to reintegrate and re come back to wholeness as a complete part of the healing. Otherwise, that, that gets left out of the picture. And that's where we get into kind of what we are experiencing as a collective consciousness right, right now is the expression of so much cumulative and collective soul loss that we have no knowledge or context for. And that's where we're getting into trouble in our modern context. Right, because we can address the physical symptoms. We can address often the the thing that seems obvious and yet still there are these residual symptoms that people seem to have that create, uh, you know, a, a feeling of some sort of dis-ease in the, in the system, in the field, in the body at this deep, deep level where a lot of times there is 
maybe a sense of kind of a depression, a apathy, um, a I'm not really, I don't really feel like I'm all here. I'm completely engaging with the world or that everything feels more dull or dim or I am not, not able to find myself like a sort of this, you know, we say these things or people might say these things and maybe your clients say these things. Well, I feel like I can't find myself. I feel like I, I don't know who I am. I feel like there's something missing and I don't know what it is. And it is pervasive throughout my life. Uh, maybe from a particular point in time, or I, I don't have connection to maybe memories from my childhood. I don't have connection to some parts of myself that I feel like maybe I used to have a connection to. Mm -hmm. uh, and or maybe it, never felt a connection to. Right. For no, for no apparent for, reason. Maybe for no reason. Maybe it's just like, wow, I just really do not know why I do not have, you know, I don't, I feel like maybe I, my experience of the world is very different from what other people seem to be experiencing in the world. Mm -hmm. And it can also be seen as having, um, you know, sometimes people experience this like, wow, I just have so much bad luck. I have uh, these things that just keep happening and uh, I'm not really, sh you know, sure what to do or what my path is or, you know, there's a, c a generalized sense of confusion. Mm -hmm. um, what and else, Michelle? In, in the physical body, we can experience this. You mentioned just slightly, I want to elaborate as, you know, having no energy, having, um, uh, you know, kind of fatigue. And yes, of course, there are physical reasons for that. And yet the physical is informed by the energetic. So are you depleted in your life force? Are you depleted in your chi? Do you feel like you can't get out of bed? Do you feel like no matter how hard you try and you're taking your supplements and you're doing your exercise and, and whatever, you know, or trying to, you feel like you can't even show up properly. Like I can't move my body. This is again, you know, that there's no apparent reason for it. And there's actually, you know, there's a whole lot of, um, you know, very mysterious, like people not even knowing that chronic fatigue syndrome was a thing, right? Because there's no, reason, no quote unquote reason for it. And yet what, what if slash I'm telling you, it's probably this aspect of having this depleted life force and this fragmentation of self, literally like loss of self. And imagine if you don't have this here, if you are missing pieces of your soul, how, like, how is that going to affect us? That's going to cause some serious challenges for us to work through. And I think that's what we're experiencing a lot of as a society. I'm sure most of us can relate to at least one or two of those pieces that Kat listed and, and, and this, in these aspects. Right. And so, you know, it can show for, in different ways for different people. And for some people, it's going to be very strong. And for some people, maybe they're not going to notice as much. Um, but can, well, let's talk about some of the ways that this occurs and mm -hmm. can happen because we talked about having a shock and I think that that's an important, uh, imagery even to feel inside of your, of yourself of that, uh, you know, the concept of shock and that the, it's a, the vibrational experience, right? It's when you, if you can imagine being in a car and going really fast and then slamming on the brakes and what happens within all of that vibration that happens and that that reverberates outwardly from the mass, from the physical form outwardly into the energy field, into the, the other levels of being and affects on this greater level. And so pretty much anything that is shocking can create this to happen and you know yeah and and it can go the other way too so we're you know we're using these like earthly physical examples like injury and you know like like what happens in a car and um and these physical experiences and yet soul shock soul fragmentation 
doesn't necessarily have obvious physical consequences. Yet we can experience soul fragmentation and the soul loss through psychic trauma, through emotional trauma, through, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of these more like intangible examples through the uh, emotional neglect, uh, you know, as a child, just not really receiving what you need. Um, yeah. Of course, sexual abuse is one of the major ways that we have this kind of trauma. I mean, this kind of, of, of thing that happens. Oftentimes you will hear people when they describe their experience of going through a particular abuse of, mm -hmm. oh, I would just, I would leave my body and I would go to a, a happy place. I would go to a different place. And the interesting thing is that sometimes when you go to find this soul part, like there is this this part of self that is this age that's still living in this happy place that doesn't feel safe enough, hasn't felt safe enough, didn't know that it was safe enough to be with the rest of the crew back home in the physical form. So it was like, you know, I think I'll just hang out over here and I'll just like, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm really not interested in what you got going on over there because that sucked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So these pieces of self, you know, sometimes again, they are in a very like, oh yeah, that's my happy space when I was eight years old. Okay. So that, you know, sometimes it, it does represent and sometimes it does materialize like that. And sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So there's the yeah, absolutely. This aspect of, um, you know, then knowing that, knowing that we, I can actually guarantee we have all experienced soul loss and soul fragmentation, either in this lifetime or in past lifetimes. It is highly likely that there are aspects of this soul loss and soul fragmentation that are still affecting us until we resolve them and until we bring, uh, we bring closure and healing and integration to them. And thirdly, the aspect of soul loss and soul integration through the lineages, through the, the physical and the energetic lineages, even if I myself in this lifetime have not experienced a, a soul fragmentation of this kind or in any of my past lives, if any of my ancestors, physical or energetic ancestors, have experienced the soul loss and soul fragmentation, it can still affect me and it can still cause soul loss and soul fragmentation for me. And this is something that we're getting into the um, historical trauma, into um, you know, lineage trauma, into some of these horrific experiences that we have endured through our collective time on earth. And I believe, um, I'm trying to remember which episode it came up in, the idea of epigenetics where the um where traumas show up in the genetic material like you know so it, for example holocaust uh survivors and the descendants of holocaust survivors all have a very particular genetic marker that nobody else has but is you know kind of unique to the trauma of the holocaust and then same thing with um you know with people who came from origins of slavery a very specific marker that shows up in the genetic material. So there is this physiological and physical component um, that corresponds to this energetic phenomenon. And I know we're, you know, that was on a different episode. Kat, do you remember which one? Um, I don't know. I know we've done some ancestral, uh, an ancestral episode. Mm -hmm. um, so it was probably, is probably within, within that one. I don't remember the exact name of it, but ancestral something. So yeah. you can look, look that up on iTunes or Stitcher or, or on our YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. Or via our webpage, shamansistersessions.com. You can find it there. Yay. Awesome. And so it's in there somewhere. And then with all of these components looking at, okay, the, um, you know, the soul loss and, and the collective soul fragmentation that happened not only to the people who were experiencing at the time, but to their genetic <laughs> biological descendants and then to the people who were involved in, uh, you know, as persecutors of trauma. Mm -hmm. Let's also keep that in mind. The people who are perpetuating yeah. and, and acting out harm and acting out trauma how, can you imagine the shock that that gives to the soul? Of course, there is trauma there too. And right. 
a loss there. Because you, you couldn't do such things if, unless parts of you like left and, and exited the building. Uh, because we, we know that, I, I mean, there are, are lots of, of cases of people who don't, you know, have a, have a history of, of, you know, even just some of the Nazi Nazis, the guards, the, the uh, doctors who were actually trying to cure cancer and trying to help people and trying to do good things. And then they got involved in what was happening at the concentration camps. And all of a sudden they were just the worst per uh, perpetrators of these horrors. And so it's, it's, it's definitely, and then, you know, and then through their lineage down through, through time. And mm -hmm. So we, it sounds like we're just all their descendants and not to say all the descendants are perpetuated. Like, <laughs> no, no, but, but they promise. can also experience um, some sort of residual issues that, that come up from their ancestors uh, doing horrible things. And so in, in a way I, I'm listening to us talk and it's like, Oh my God, we're all screwed. Uh, <laughs> we're all fragmented and, and messed up. And how are we ever going to get to, we're like, ah, oh, we've just like laid a giant dog turd on your spiritual advancement is what it feels like in a way. But this is where we turn it back <laughs> around. Okay. So now we're moving into the, we've, we've talked about soul loss and soul fragmentation. Now what? <laughs> okay, we've got yeah, we've got a lot of cases where a lot of things uh, could have happened that created uh, these experiences and confusing experiences. Like I can't figure this thing out. Experiences. So it is a good thing that there are actually ways by which this can be uh, assisted and remedied and helped. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, where we get the soul retrieval. Uh, the, the concept, so let's just talk about like the concept of soul retrieval and what that entails and yeah. uh, what that might look like. Absolutely. So it's basically exactly what it sounds like. The <laughs> short version, the concept of soul retrieval, if we're looking at soul fragmentation and soul loss as this kind of, as this crack and breaking and dissipation of, of pieces of the soul, soul retrieval is the act of calling those pieces back and bringing them back, offering them healing. Usually there's some, some healing that needs to occur, not only for those, the pieces of the soul themselves and also for the individual and, and for the situation around it. You know, there's, there's m many facets to this, but then having this piece of soul that was lost, was fragmented, offering it healing, offering the self-healing and letting it reintegrate and rejoin with the whole. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to note that there is not just one way to do this. There are many ways that we go through healing processes in which we might not be aware that that's what's happening as we go through our process, but it, it can happen in, in numerous ways. And so let's talk a little bit about some of the more kind of traditional shamanic kind of journey sort of soul retrieval work that, mm -hmm. you know, we've been trained in and um, some people use, some people are very specific, like they, they have their method of doing this kind of work. Like most people kind of have their sort of niche of the way that they do this. And it can come from, from many different uh, lineages and, and, and processes. So let's, let's, well, let's talk about that, Michelle. <laughs> awesome. I'd, I'd actually really love to start with the, the soul retrieval that kind of happens without knowing that that's what's happening mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm seeing that and Kat, I'm sure you're probably seeing this too in people right now. So this, you know, and maybe this is you where you don't consciously know that that's what's happening, but there is this aspect again, like we're talking about in the symptoms of, I know there's something more I'm finding who I am and, or like, I need to find who I am. There's something missing. Ah, this feeling of, ah, and then there's an awakening experience and it's like, and the feeling is like you discover slash remember a part of yourself that felt like it was lost. And that is a possible, and I mean, it could be, 
you know, there's who's to say, right? There's many different like parts of the awakening experience. And yet I'm very firmly convinced that society at large, those who are open to it, are experiencing some form of spontaneous soul retrieval simply because they are asking. Mm -hmm. And they may not know that that's what they're asking for, but who am I? I need to remember who I am. I need to, I'm ready to reclaim this. And then it's like, that's all that's, that needs to happen. Exactly. I think that's so important because this sounds like such a complicated process. Like, oh my gosh, I've lost parts of my soul. And who even knows what lineage or what lifetime that was from? And oh my gosh, this has to be so complicated. Um, I must need, you know, mountains of support around this. And I think that this is really important what you're saying around I, I, am, I am willing to know who I am. I'm requesting. I am asking who am I? What is, what are, what is the depth of my most authentic self? You know, this, these questions help me to remember, help me to remember who I am. Um, can be some of the most valuable and important work that we do uh, as we're on our journey. Mm -hmm. And it's work that we can do by ourselves. Yeah. So Yeah. So this, again, you might never know that that's what's happening, but I can pretty much guarantee that if you experience something like what I just described, this like feeling like something's gone or something's missing or you're lost or whatever, and starting on this path and just even if it's subconsciously asking for help and then having this feeling of receiving or remembering or coming back or coming home. Yeah. It's a homecoming feeling yeah. is, is a, yeah. is a big hallmark of this experience. Wow. I, maybe I don't even know what's, what just happened, but I feel like somehow I just came home. And again, there's so many ways that this can happen. Mm -hmm. This can happen in talk therapy. It can happen in uh, hypnotherapy. It can happen in so many different ways where you might not be aware that that's what you're doing. Maybe you don't even have a concept. There's a lot of people out there who aren't even speaking this kind of you know, super spiritual language, right? But they're still having that experience of through the process of talking through, you know, especially what happened in your childhood and, and doing that inner child work, which we just did last week, an episode on the inner, healing the inner child. So I would encourage you to check that one out for sure. But going through this process, giving voice to parts of ourselves that haven't had a voice. And in so doing, it's almost like tugging them back into like, hey, it's okay to talk. It's okay to, to, be, to be here. It's okay to, uh, like, I'm here to hold space for you, for your process, and to love you and to honor you. And maybe that part of self hasn't had that. So they're like, okay, well this is what I really need. And through that process of that self-love and self-inquiry and possibly probably talking to someone and being able to kind of go through some different healing processes or therapeutic processes, being able to slowly bring aspects of self back into being. And so um, this, this has been talked about in different terms and in different ways in the realms of psychology for a long time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the good news is you've probably done soul retrieval on yourself without really knowing what was doing. So yes, we delivered a whole lot of, um, you know, the, the crummy side of this in, in the first half of our conversation today. But, you know, again, it's probably slash usually a lot easier than we really think it's going to be. Mm -hmm. So that being said, there are times when there is a more in intentional, intensive process that is needed to call these soul pieces back. And this is where we're getting into some of the, you know, what, what I call sort of like the dramatic looking soul retrieval looks like <laughs> that, that Kat and I both have a lot of experience in. And, and, you know, there's singing and there's drumming and there's shaking and there's moving and the, you know, it's, it, so again, it can look very different for depending on what you're doing, but it usually feels like more of a very on purpose, very ritualized, very, um, uh, very intentional and very powerful soul retrieval. 
when you're getting into that deep kind of wound. Right. And so shamans all over the world have been doing this in their own specialized way. A lot of times through the process of utilizing some sort of trance inducing state for the shaman to be able to enter into the astral plane, to travel, to find these soul fragments and say, Hey, why don't you come home? Like, welcome home. It's going to be Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to be delicious. Like, come on, come on home. And to encourage these lost parts to come back to this this being and to go through the process of reintegrating that soul fragment back into the the body into the being um and you know this could be in lots of ways a lot of of drum journeying all over the world that was done and so this is a very typical you you might go you might uh do a session with a shaman who um i know someone i trained with she would put headphones on and listen to drumming in the headphones and go on the journey for the person. So they didn't have any sort of trance experience or anything like that. And she would go and do it and come back and be like, blow it into the body and be like, you're done. See you later. Uh, and that was the end of the session or she'd do it on the phone uh, and then it would be done. So there are, are lots of ways that this is done and in more using plant medicines shamans will also go through this process of helping people to reintegrate back these soul fragments so I, I think it's important to note that I just want to reiterate there is no one way that this is done this is done in so many different ways so many different people have different processes that they go through uh, in order to create this and I know that I, I deeply appreciate Michelle's process of, of um, you know, working through soul loss and, and fragmentation and bringing those parts back in because in my experience, the work that you do has, has such a healing effect um, in, in that it, it, it gives such a voice to these parts that have been lost that have not had a voice maybe for a thousand years sometimes. And I think that that's not always the case. And sometimes uh, shamanic practitioners can, I feel, try, I don't know if they're trying, but make this seem way more mystical and woo woo and like totally like separate from the person. Um, in a way that makes it hard for our modern minds to conceptualize what's going on and to trust the process and to be able to integrate it more fully. Mm -hmm. Does that, Thank you. Does that resonate? I'll, I'll just, can I tell a super quick little story yeah. um, about uh, a session that I had with Michelle? I don't even know when this was, probably at least two or more, three years ago. And I remember there was a soul fragmentation piece from a past life of a man in some it was like in in some some place in America <laughs> some place in America um, and his grief and loss of his his partner and that I remember you know being able to like to feel so much of of the uh, process of of listening and being in contact with this aspect of self, which was not myself, right? Totally foreign, but very familiar. And it coming back and coming in. And coming into this area where I've had just, uh, I don't have anymore, but I had had over years a uh, phantom odd pain that didn't make any sense. There was no medical reason. There was no structural reason. I'd been to see tons of different people for lots of different reasons. And that it was uh, almost like this open wound where there was this part of me that didn't want to be in home because it would hurt and it needed this uh, reintegration process. And it was very healing. I remember right after the session, I was like, oh, 
I just want to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> like I just, and I remember finding, you know, some tobacco that I do for offerings and like rolling a cigarette. Like I don't even know the last time I smoked a cigarette was, but I smoked this cigarette and it was like, it was so satisfying. And it was this, this experience of welcoming this part of myself back home. And I could feel this like, whoa, uh, oh, it, yeah, it's good to be in a human body. Like, it's good. Like, oh, yeah, no, I remember this is good. I, I love this. Not to say that I became a smoker and that's what I did, but, but it, <laughs> it, was, it was enormously satisfying to a level that I would never be like, oh, that's, oh, wow, that's so good. It's so good for me to have this experience right now. I would just be like, okay, well, it's kind of gross and it kind of makes me nauseous. It's not something I really want to do. Um, but I just remember how enormously satisfying that, that cigarette was. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing. So, <sighs> so what I'm hearing in that though, it's like this part of yourself that had been missing had been gone that you didn't even know probably you didn't even know that this part was missing because usually we don't no, absolutely not right and then when it came back you experienced a very tangible like a very physical visceral experience of releasing pain that had been plaguing you for a long time and you know having this place in your body experience this relief and then this almost like imagine, you know, this part of yourself, you know, who knows, maybe he smoked, like maybe that past life of you smoked, but having that like welcoming back of, oh my gosh, this overwhelming pleasure sense of it's good to be back in a body. And, and that is, I think really an amazing hallmark. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Honestly, like I feel a little embarrassed to remember. I barely remember that. Well, I, I think like 50 things happened. <laughs> like, I don't know how there were like five amazing stories from that one session for sure. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So, I mean, we could, I could go off on like five different things that happened in that session. Great. Um, I think I remember which one you're talking about. I think I remember different parts of that, that session, but, but yeah, it's, it goes to show this like soul, loss is a very kind of etheric concept and it has very tangible effects where as soon as you're you're back right again okay you don't have any pain anymore that's huge how many of us have chronic pain that has no apparent reason right and you have this physical experience of oh my gosh i feel more whole more complete more in my body in this way that i didn't even know was missing and I think that is where it's, it speaks to almost to this, this universal suffering that most of us don't even know. We're, we're suffering until we aren't suffering anymore. And then it's like this, oh my gosh, how have I lived this whole time in this state of incompletion, in this state of missing something? And I'm, I'm not saying this, I'm saying this not to just say like, oh, we're all missing something. Like we should all be immediately discontent with the lives that we have. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but knowing that there's this, you, if you feel like this, I think this is the core of what I really want to share. If you have any of these feelings that have no reason, I'm doing air quotes for those who are listening to only audio later, that have no reason there is a reason. There is a reason. There is a good reason. And you're not making this up. You're not fooling yourself. It's not, a, you know, a mind over matter thing. There is a legitimate concept that does speak to this ineffable feeling that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there is a solution to it. <laughs> there is. And yeah. like we said, just asking those questions. And, um, you know, I, I also believe that by, uh, you know, taking ourselves into a meditative space, creating a, you know, a bubble of beautiful golden light around us or putting ourselves into a merkaba of protection, calling on our protective guides and angels and beings of light that support us and being available and welcome to four soul parts that are ready to be 
reintegrated that are going to be helpful and assist us in bringing our truth, our work, our, our love, our heart to the world, that if with grace and ease to be welcomed home um, and to that we, we can go through these processes on our own. Um, but I, I think there are those, I think those little caveats are actually important. Um, and uh, to, if you are working with somebody, to have somebody who is experienced, who has done this before, is also nice. And uh, because, <laughs> you know, the integration afterwards can also be a thing. And so I, I think we should definitely tune a little bit into, into that, into yeah. like, well, uh, okay, so now what? Right. So, okay. I called my soul back to myself. Now what? And <laughs> that's like, that's a great name for a book. <laughs> right? just like, okay, that's, that's my, my, uh, my future publication. I called my soul back to myself. Now what? And the, the hilarious adventures of a modern day shaman. There we go. Awesome. That's like really killer branding right there. That's really good. <laughs> And, but with this, like entirely seriously, it's kind of like, okay, no, really now what? And, and the integration, actually, I'd really love to hear from you, Kat, based on that story that you shared, do you have any, and actually it was a few years ago. So do you remember any of the pieces that you did to, to integrate that? Piece? Well, I, you know, definitely that it was funny because it was like smoking that cigarette and sitting and being present, like being completely using that as a moment to be completely present with this part of myself to welcome and actually say, welcome, welcome home. Thank you for, for being a part of, of my, my wholeness. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here to be a collaborator and I welcome your highest aspects into, into uh, wholeness with me so that we can journey together and be happy and find love and all of these things. You know, I think there was a, a lot of, of conflict uh, at that time, you know, in my relationship around, oh, if I'm being loved, I was freaking out. I was actually having freak outs whenever someone would love me. I would freak out so much that I would be like, ah, no, stop it. Ah, I'm freaking out over here because there was this part of me that was missing that was like, had been so wounded in love. And, you know, I, I also believe that, that it's important to kind of, you know, feel into the, the physical body, into the integration piece of allowing this like slow movements and slow breathing and letting things settle in in a slow way afterwards, I feel is very important not to be rushing back into life right away and coming into like, oh, well, now I need to go do this and this and blah, 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 blah. but like giving time and space for that knitting together to occur for the nervous system to relax for the old traumas and, and things to kind of move through and shake out that are you know, held within the energy body that, that might need a little bit of space. I, I think it's, it's like be so super soft and kind and gentle and be like, okay, now I want to, whatever, I want to smoke a cigarette. I want to eat a hamburger, like whatever that thing is and be like, okay, that's interesting that I would want to do that. All right. Well, maybe let's, let's, let's utilize that as a way to kind of ritualize and, and ceremonially welcome home this part of ourselves. Like, okay, like we're going to get to know each other again. Like, all right, let's, let's mm -hmm. see what's there. Let's see what's happening. Absolutely. I'm almost having a, um, a imagining of like people who get organ transplants where, <laughs> right. Right. So it's this, you have this new body part in effect that, um, you know, that, in, well, in the, the realm of an organ transplant, okay, it wasn't yours and now it's yours, right? But, <laughs> right. But, 
for for all intents and purposes, I mean, there's there are stories they have observed people, you know, who get heart transplants or or whatever. All of a sudden, they have cravings for different kind of foods, you know, that that the the other person used to crave or used to like, or there there are these kind of weaving in of these characteristics. And, and this is not to say that any of your soul pieces, like they're you, they're not, it's not that it's not you. It's just that it's parts of you that have kind of stepped, you know, separated out and stepped away. And now that they're back, it's like, oh, I didn't know that I liked that thing, but this part of me really likes that thing. Okay. So I'm going to play with that. I'm going to, or this, this part of me is open to experiencing this thing. Right. And and I think um, I had a, a pretty profound example of some soul retrieval work that I did for myself over the fall. I think it was in September or so. And I believe I shared about it on this podcast. It was uh, right after, or it was immediately following getting attacked by an owl. And I'm pretty sure I shared that story mm-hmm. about getting attacked by an owl on here. And the, the work that resulted from that, doing some massive lineage healings, lineage clearings for myself and for my family, my, um, my genetic family, ancestry, lineages. And there was some really profound soul retrieval work that occurred that I had subconsciously known was missing for my entire life. And yet, you know, it took me 30 years to be able to have this kind of like light bulb moment of like, oh, that's, that's a, a wound. That's not just this like weird phenomenon in my family. That's a pattern of soul loss. Mm-hmm. So, and then be able to bring healing to that and then to sit with the energies that resulted from that and look at, okay, now there are parts of me that are open to this thing that for a very long time I wasn't open to, if I was being very honest with myself and parts of me that were, um, had new capacity and new enthusiasm and context for creating these things in my life that I didn't even know were gone. So right. it's not that it's not you. It's just no. like. It's just, and so yeah. don't, you know, don't be surprised, but be available that there might be things that you didn't have access to before. You might have childhood memories that come back. You might have, um, which you may or may not, like go back to the inner child uh, episode from last week that you may or may not need support in handling at that time. Um, you might have, uh, new interests, creativity might be sparked. You might have a lot more energy, uh, release uh, illness or pain in, in you somehow. You might have a different approach to your relationships or to your ability to love yourself or to your work in the world and what it is you're, you're doing. Or you might access these, you know, if if we're thinking about how, well, I'm, I'm accessing something that maybe happened in a past life, that I'm healing this trauma and wound that happened in that, in that time, well, if I do that and I access it, I heal that wound and I draw that, that soul piece back home, consider the trainings, the education, the information and the abilities that that lifetime might have had that you might have access to now. So it's like now's a good time to really sit with what would be interesting to me? What would be fun? What would be maybe uh, going to the bookstore and looking at different shelves than I usually look at or, uh, you know, engaging in some sort of creative endeavor and that I haven't tried before. So I think that after a soul retrieval is a, is a good time to be questioning like, huh, what, a, what, what might be new that would be fun that I might be interested in or have an ability in that maybe I didn't, I didn't think that I was that good at before. Maybe I didn't think that was a great artist, but but now and I feel really drawn to, to painting all of a sudden. Well, wow, okay, let's just see what happens. Great. And, and also with that, what gets even deeper? 
Mm -hmm. So in, in addition to the, you know, whatever is new or a new expression, what is even more profound and even more revealed and lit up? And so, yeah, just being present with these changes, being really available to notice and actually go back and, and reevaluate the, you know, the, who am I, who am I now as a result of this soul retrieval work and notice, has that changed? Are there new pieces in play? We give you a lot of tools. I know that this is a, a topic about which there is so much more that we can get into, mm -hmm. but please do um, you know, keep tuning in this month in July, especially because the rest of our episodes this month are related to this theme from different, uh, you know, from different angles. And again, we're working off that, like the lunar consciousness of grief work on the 24th and uh, and go back and we have talked about this throughout several of our past episodes too. I believe the dark night of the soul we probably addressed some of this in that episode too. The inner child episode, um, the ancestry episode where we had special guest Tony Reynolds. That might have been the one that you were referring to, mm -hmm. Kat, um, friend of ours, Tony, and uh, and speaking about ancestry and soul soul DNA as well as the genetic ancestry. And know that, let's see, that's all that's coming to mind for now. That's what yeah, I need that's to That's a lot. Here. That's like yeah. six hours of content. I know. Uh, right. Yeah. But, but please do come back. Um, two weeks from now is the past lives episode, which is really directly related to mm -hmm. what we're talking about today. Yeah. We're going to go even deeper into this topic and this subject and talk about different, different things around past lives and what those mean and, and how you can work with those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if this is something that feels resonance with you, feel free to reach out to us. You can uh, reach us at shaman sister sessions at gmail.com or go to our website, shaman sister sessions.com, get on our newsletter list. You'll get uh, special news and updates that other people don't get. And uh, feel free to send us a message on Facebook get in touch with us. Let us know what you think about this. Uh, if you've had some interesting experiences, post about those on our Facebook page, Shaman Sister Sessions. And uh, we're really highly interested in your experience or your questions. And for those of you in the Portland area, Kat will be here in the last week of July. And we are going to be doing a bunch of things. So we're not like ubiquitously available during that time, but but she is going to be here the last week of July and the first couple of days of August. And we will have availability for probably two ish in person sessions with the two of us. So if the, you are interested in that, please do contact us right away about booking that. Again, our calendar is already filling up between all the things that we're doing and our offerings. And if you would like to receive some healing work, receive some amazing work with both of us, this does this happens a few times a year that we get in the same place at the same time. And, uh, and experience the magic of soul retrieval of all of that we have to offer. Please do reach out as soon as possible and we can go ahead and have a consultation about that. The, um, let's see, our next episode is the 17th. We're taking next week off for Kat's birthday. Yay. Yay. Happy birthday, Kat. Yay. At uh, one o'clock usual time for our past lives episode. The following week, again, is our special guest. So I really highly encourage you to come live to that one. So we can be, you know, you can ask questions, you can chat in, and we'll be talking about the lunar consciousness of grief. I would also like to invite you to my next free masterclass, which is on the morning. This is the first time I've ever done it in the morning of the 17th. So it is before, immediately before our podcast I don't remember if it starts at 10 or 10.30. I should have looked that up, but it's either at 10 or 10.30. And the topic is original medicine. So this is a theme that I've been exploring hugely in the last uh, month in particular for myself. Part of my own soul retrieval work has been about reclaiming and re-expressing my original medicine and then putting that work out into the world. So if you'd like to join me for a free masterclass, you can go ahead and look for that. It, there's a Facebook event as well. Um, as well as on the event, right? Or you can just message me and I'll send you the link. Amazing. Thanks, Michelle.
Thank you. And be sure to check out all of our past episodes on YouTube. Subscribe, share with your friends, talk us up, make comments, like us, all of the things that, that we like. Or on iTunes or Stitcher, you can listen to those anytime. And if you feel like called to support the Shaman Sisters and all of our expenses on the back end to produce this podcast, you can do so at patreon.com slash slash Shaman Sister Sessions. And it's, what is it? P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Yep. Uh, usually Michelle does that. So I've never had to, I don't usually have to spell it for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and you can... Um, you can support us and support this work because we do all this content for over a year and a half now for free. So we are happy to garner your support uh, for all of this content that we're putting out into the world. And we want to thank our alchemical allies, Kai and Renee, I believe too, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Even $1 a month is helpful. So if that's all you can do, then that is great. We are so delighted to receive your support, knowing that it is your support and support of people like you who empowers and, and makes it possible for us to continue to offer this work for free. It is free. We will not ever charge for you to view these, view or listen to these podcast episodes. And we really want to keep it that way. So please help us help you. And with so much love, let us send you off. Unless, Kat, you have any other announcements like your retreat? Oh, I do have a retreat <laughs> in August. I have a retreat for the healers process. And we are going to be getting together with other powerful healers and people on the path to be exploring energetic and spiritual mastery, to be working on what our truthful, honest, authentic, most amazing epic expressions are in the world and having an incredible transforma transformational weekend. So if you're interested in working with me in person, uh, reach out katherinebird.com for more information. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It is always a pleasure to have these conversations and to go deep into what we're doing. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in two weeks on the 17th. Thanks, Michelle.